Hello friends, looking at current affairs for 28th April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 13. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, all women battalion to take on Kashmir women pelters of stone. So this is the decision taken by the union government after we heard the news that girl students are throwing, throwing stones at security forces in Srinagar. The central government has plans to raise an all women India reserve battalion in Jammu and Kashmir. So this would also result in recruitment. The local youths would be provided jobs through this. Even it will be borne by the central government, the entire expenditure for setting up this battalion. Plus, the central government has also plans for further furthering the projects, infrastructure projects, developmental projects in the state. You should know that PDP and BJP are in coalition in Jammu and Kashmir. The government is formed by them. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi had pledged 80,000 crore package for the development of Jammu and Kashmir in 2015. So presently the Home Ministry had a marathon meeting with the various officials here and decisions have been taken on finalizing various projects worth 19,500 crores. So this is there. Even plans are to build uh, many football fields and sport facilities in rural Kashmir so that the youth can be engaged in these constructive sports activities as well. So this is regarding Jammu and Kashmir. Second is no barrier to naming Lokpal, says Supreme Court. So this is regarding the Lokpal and Lokayukta Act of 2013. We have seen quite often the entire details of this act. You should know by now. What is the hindrance in putting this act into effect also? We have seen quite in detail quite often. So this is actually the Lokpal Selection Committee is there. So this is a high level selection committee comprising of five members, Prime Minister, Lok Sabha Speaker, leader of the opposition. Your LOP is leader of the opposition. And this is actually the leader of the opposition is a recognized body in the Lok Sabha. So leader of the opposition in Lok Sabha is a recognized post and that opposition party should have at least 10% of the seats in the house. So that is why there is no leader of the opposition in the Lok Sabha present because no other party won even 10% of the seats. So this is the point on the basis of which the present central government says that selection committee cannot be formed and that's why Lokpal and Lokayukta Act cannot be put into effect. Lokpal cannot be appointed. So the Supreme Court is slashing out against it now. So these are the three members. Fourth is Chief Justice of India and another is an eminent jurist chosen by them. So these are the five member selection committee. Now the Supreme Court judge is saying that this is cannot be the reason for stalling appointment of the Lokpal because section 4 of the 2013 Lokpal Act clearly states that if there is any person missing from this selection committee, it is not a reason for not appointment of chairman or members of Lokpal. So it says appointment will not be invalidated merely because one of the members is missing. So when this provision is already there in the same act, then why is the government delaying? The government at the center presently is saying that we are passing an amendment act to Lokpal and Lokayukta to replace leader of the opposition with single leader of the single largest party in the house in Lok Sabha. So if this will be replaced, then this appointment can take place. But the Lokpal and Lokayukta Amendment Act is not planning to just change this, but other aspects are also involved in it. So of course, it will take time for this Amendment Act to Lokpal and Lokayukta being passed. And the same was there in case of CBI appointments too. But then that was passed. So that act was a standalone provision that only this aspect, leader of the opposition has to change. That was passed and CBI has been appointed too. So that is the same thing is the problem here, but government is insisting on passing the amendment. And now the news which is coming presently, the Supreme Court is saying there is no need to even do that. There's already a provision in the original act itself and you can still make the appointment to Lokpal. So this is the case. Lok Ayuktas are appointed at state level. So in the Lokpal and Lok Ayukta Act, the last statement here in this act only states that the states have to make provisions for Lok Ayukta appointment after the implementation of this act. So this is there. So, of course, the another final statement which has been made in this case of the Supreme, the Supreme Court says that this is the legislative domain, but then this is the fact being brought forth by the Supreme Court. Next is US-based firm to build span on Pamban Bridge. So, this is regarding the Pamban Bridge. This is an important location. You can see this is the mainland India, the southern peninsular India. This is the Pamban Island located here. So, this you can see. And this is Mannar Island here. 
this Pamban Bridge, Adams Bridge is going to connect. This is in Sri Lanka. So this is the Pamban Island here. The Pamban Bridge is located here. It's connecting mainland India with Rameshwaram and Pamban Island. So this is being proposed. This region, you should know this geographical map here. All the locations, Park Bay, Park Strait, Adams Bridge here. All these are important from geographic mapping perspective. So this Pamban bridge, which is there, the railway bridge, so Ministry of Railways had had initiated tenders on this and now US-based company has been selected for building a span of this Pamban bridge. So this Pamban rail bridge is a cantilever bridge. What is a cantilever bridge? A bridge which hangs, means the other end is open. One side is is on the having a base and the other end is open so this is the pamban bridge actually it can be opened up this is a railway bridge it can be opened up for letting larger ships pass through so a span of this means a middle part of this actually will be now manufactured by us based company it's actually a joint venture with lnt which has been formed and this will be looking into this also it is said this is the world's second most corrosive environment so corrosion resistant high strength steel would be used for manufacturing this span of the bridge this is the news. Then next is judicial performance index proposed. So the Niti Aayog is now working on the three-year action plan. We have already seen that the governing council meet of Niti Aayog took place. And where there needs to be a five-year vision statement, a seven-year medium-term strategy, and then a three-year action plan. So this three-year action plan is presently being discussed with the states with the chief ministers. So the draft three-year action plan has been prepared by Niti Aayog and various provisions of it are now coming in in news. So this is one on judicial performance index which has been proposed by the Niti Aayog. So what is this judicial performance index? It is an index which will look into the performance of district courts. So the high courts and the chief justices of high courts can keep track of their performances because that is the regulatory body. The, all the district courts come under the high courts. So that is why the supervision, superintendent's jurisdiction is of the high court over all district courts. So this can help in reducing delays, me measuring their, mapping their performance as such. And how will they, that be done too? By fixing a non-mandatory. Non-mandatory means not compulsory, but a time frame would be fixed. This is the time frame for various types of cases. So these are benchmarks. You don't have to follow them, but this at least gives an idea whether the case is being delayed or not. So this will be proposed and through this, wherever there are delays that will can be measured and then a performance index can be prepared. So this, it says, will help the judiciary. So this will help in eliminating delays because judiciary needs reforms. This is one aspect of its suggestion. Another suggestion is that non-core functions of the police should be outsourced to private agencies or government departments. So what are the non-core functions? It has given examples too. So these non-core functions can be like, you know, the, when the job verification has to be done, police verification for passport applications needs to be done, or serving court summons. When court summons comes, then they have to serve them. So this can be given to other departments. So to reduce the burden on the police and the workload can be reduced for the police and that will bring in efficiency. Because even in India, police to population ratio is low. Our present level is 137 per lakh population, 137 police officials. UN norm is that at least there should be 222 police officials per lakh population. So we should try to reach this UN norm too. So that is why this has been suggested. Another suggestion with respect to the police force Niti Aayog has given is to increase the hiring of women in the police force to reach at least the target of 30% of all new recruits should be women. So this is a proposal. Another aspect with respect to judicial appointments, the point which has been highlighted quite often that in ease of doing business report of the World Bank, India ranks low in various uh, you know, performance indices and one of them is enforcing contracts. So this is one basis on which ease of doing business ranking is also calculated. So in enforcing contracts specifically too, we have a low rank. So for this, what needs to be done is judicial appointments should be streamlined on an online real-time statistics basis based on the workload of pending cases. So wherever there are workload of pending cases more, then there should be, you know, preference given to it, an urgency given to it and judicial appointments should take place accordingly. So this is also a suggestion of Niti Aayog. So this is regarding that. Next news item is UID pan linking of Faustian bargain. So this is the same case which we have been look, looking at, the Aadhaar linking to the pan card. So here the 
the petitioners are arguing that this insertion of section 139 aa income tax act mandating that aadhar should be linked with pan is a faustian bargain so what is a faustian bargain this is an idiom a term used means an agreement in which a person abandons his spiritual values or moral principles to obtain wealth or other benefits so since you have to do it you are stepping out of your moral values and you are going ahead with it means you are forced to do it basically so this for wealth purposes so this is what the opposite the petitioners are calling this linking of aadhar with pan so this is the case it says that it will turn the entire nation into a concentration camp where citizens are under state surveillance round the clock so concentration camp word state phrase been used is too much but yeah of course it will result it may result in surveillance because that is also possible through aadhar linking that the government will know on every aspect if everything is linked passports and pan cards and bank accounts if everything is linked to aadhar then the a tab and that's all online so by a click if it's required by a click you can know everything about any individual what are the transactions done what, where are the plans you know of traveling or whatever income tax payments everything so this is one aspect of it so though the government says that this is not for surveillance that aadhar has been emphasized on it is for welfare purposes that you know for this pan card linking also it has said that bogus pan cards can be eliminated and tax compliance can improve so that is the reason for which this has been emphasized but this is also possible through aadhar being linked to various aspects so this is a point put forth to also the court has responded by saying to the petitioner that aadhar is still purely voluntary it cannot be forced on citizens this was the statement of supreme court and supreme court still adheres to that you know that order and it's actually an interim order that was given the court said we made the statement a final judgment on this case has not come yet so we'll wait and watch what happens further the developments will take place so this is an important ongoing case on aadhar another important case which is going on which is before a five judge constitutional bench is regarding the whatsapps uh, agreement with facebook on sharing user data so this has been challenged that this is going against right to privacy the government has also said that we are to ensure online data protection of individuals and also freedom of choice and privacy of individuals is upheld by the government so supreme court has been told by the central government that try is working on a new regulatory regime which, which will ensure this online data protection and freedom of choice and privacy of individuals so this earlier to we know you should already know about this we have seen this earlier to that, that try is working on it it has been stated in the supreme court to and the government uh, in this case also the supreme court is uh, looking into the arguments from both sides so the advocates on behalf of whatsapp they are arguing that one whatsapp upholds right to privacy of individuals it has provided for end to end encryption for that matter that is one aspect this we have discussed in news end to end encryption has been provided so it cannot be tampered by a third party but present case is about whatsapp willingly having an agreement of sharing user data with facebook so that is being challenged and another point which is put forth is that whatsapp is a free service if somebody doesn't want to use it they can opt out of it this was actually a case before the delhi high court and on appeal it has gone to the supreme court presently so in the delhi high court the judgment was that whatsapp is a free service if you want to opt out of it if you feel that this is taking away your right to privacy you can just delete your whatsapp account and the delhi high court had ordered whatsapp that if a person deletes his account then all his information data should be erased so this was the order then but this has been challenged because this is a larger question of right to privacy now and the supreme court is hearing this case and was the same argument was provided here in the supreme court that users have a choice to stop using the service the supreme court statement was that this is not a freedom of choice that you have a choice to stop but this is actually a freedom of negative choice that you are deprived of something some free service so let's see what will be the further arguments on this case an important case on right to privacy the next is bhutan out of vehicle pact so this is regarding the motor vehicle agreement even this we have discussed earlier you should already know that bhutan has plans to opt out and this has formally been announced by the bhutan government now so it was opposing it was not ready to concede and now it is official bhutan has said that bangladesh india and nepal can go ahead it was a bbin grouping which included bangladesh bhutan india nepal but after bhutan opting out the bhutan government has given statement that the other three countries go ahead and operationalize motor vehicle agreement presently bhutan cannot be part of this 
So it has clearly stated that the reason for this being that there is severe opposition in the country, in Bhutan, against this motor vehicle agreement because there are fears that this will result in vehicles coming, trucks for transportation actually, for trade. These will be coming from neighboring countries into Bhutan and that will result in vehicular emissions and that will affect the carbon neutrality status which Bhutan upholds and it is you know, keen on ensuring environment protection. So Bhutan, you should know, is the country which has, you know, happiness index too. So generally, we have the human development index. Here it is the happiness index which they look into. So that is environment protection is also very much upheld by this country. So that is why because of domestic opposition, presently it has opted out from the motor vehicle agreement. So this agreement was signed in 2015 and had to be verified by the legislative bodies in the states. In Bhutan also, the lower house had ratified it in the second attempt, but the upper house has voted it down. It is not ready to accept it and the Bhutan government has not gone ahead with a joint parliamentary meeting. It does not want to go against the viewpoints of the people in the country. It says people are not ready for this yet, so we cannot go ahead with it. And this is the status now. Next is now Trump flips on NAFTA. So this is North American free trade agreement amongst three countries, USA, the northern neighbor of USA, Canada, and the southern neighbor, Mexico. So three countries involved here. It's a free trade agreement of 1994. US President Donald Trump, while he was campaigning for the presidential post, he had stated that he's going to scrap and opt out of NAFTA. But now he has changed his stand on this too, as he has done for various other cases. He says that he has heard pleas from the neighbors, northern, northern and southern neighbors, means from Canada and Mexico. And that is why he has he has decided not to opt out of it, but then it can be looked relooked into. So that would be done, but no opting out. So this is the statement. Same we had seen with US one China policy too. He stated one China policy means that you have to agree that Taiwan is part of China. So that was no independent diplomatic relations with Taiwan can be established. Taiwan uh, is part of China. So this one China policy is followed by US also. India also follows it. But then President Donald Trump, the case which happened because he received congratulatory telephonic conversation was there with Taiwan president and that was not liked by China. And that is why being adamant on that, Donald Trump said that we will look relook into the one China policy of US, whether we should follow it or not. But then later he clamped down on it. He stated that the request from Chinese president has been responded to and will not look, we look at one China policy of US. We still adhere to it. So same way with NAFTA also. He had earlier stated it is a worse trade deal and now he has accepted it. He's talking that if there are changes required that will be looked into. So this has resulted in trade among the three countries increasing drastically from the 1993 levels. You can see it's 1.1 trillion dollar trade amongst them now. So this is NAFTA the free trade agreement of 1994. So it eliminates most of tariff, non-tariff barriers and facilitates trade and investment. So Mexico, US, Canada, both the US, Canada developed countries, Mexico is still developing. So here the jobs would be increased here and US, Canada would get market of Mexico, low consumer prices from Mexican uh, produce goods. So me Mexican produce goods would have low prices. So that would benefit the US and can Canadian citizens too. So all these are low labor costs also in Mexico would benefit them, USA and Canada. So these are the benefits of NAFTA for all three. Then next is direct tax base to soar in three years. So Niti Aayog says that India's direct tax base should soar in three years. This is part of again the draft three year action plan. So this is because of demonetization and steps taken to curb black money. We should have direct taxation increase so because people have come up and declared their you know, income as such to or the money which is there, it has been put into the bank account. So this will result in more of income being declared and that's why taxation would also increase. So this is being stated that we should try to increase the direct tax base. Plus another recommendation which has been made by Niti Aayog is that the outlays on healthcare, railways and road sector have to increase in the next three years. Because it says healthcare is important because it will enhance the social welfare of the people too and it will result in human capital being developed. So if healthcare is taken care of, then the human human capital is there, means labor is productive. And if the human if healthcare is not taken care of, then there is excess expenditure, extra expenditure on the health of the individual. 
so preventive health care and emphasizing on ensuring social welfare of the people in health is very important so we have also declared that we will increase the percentage of gdp spent on health too so the target is to have it to 3.6 percent of gdp should be spent on health by 2019-20 presently 2015-16 levels are 1.7 percent this is the healthcare expenditure of the government then next is reject cotton project on the envy so in a few months textile commissioner will come up with a revamped technology mission on cotton so this will be based on the technology mission on cotton which was originally implemented from 2000 to 2020 so now a revamped version of it would come up it will have four parts again two on cotton productivity dealt by agriculture ministry and other two dealt by textile ministry on processing so these are the proposals so this will be worked on and put forth before the government central government by the textile commissioner and then it would be put into effect so india is the largest producer of cotton in the world but still we need to be competitive we should adopt global standards and focus on quality so that's why this technology mission on cotton is being planned next is a robotic system that 3d prints buildings so now mit scientists massachusetts institute of technology scientists from us have designed a new robotic system that can 3d print the basic structure of the entire building so all the basic structures can be can it 3d printed means different materials can be incorporated and they can be 3d printed material density could be specifically provided for so means optimum combination for strength insulation etc can be provided for so this is optimum development of basic structures through 3d printing can take place so it's a huge robotic arm which is there you can see so system comes of a tracked vehicle that carries a large industrial robotic arm it has a smaller precision motor motion robotic arm at its end and this highly controllable arm can be used for const any construction activity which is required so this structure can be built so this is the latest development in 3d printing too that buildings can be 3d printed now and with precision and this says that this would be so advanced in such precision that tra traditional methods of construction cannot be used for that purpose what will be provided for by this 3d printing 3d printing we have already discussed in detail so the background of it i'm not discussing them again i'll give you a link if you want you can go through that then next is vinegar to the rescue of great barrier reef so we have already discussed great barrier reef too it has faced the the heat as such the mass coral bleaching which has taking place so in 2016 there was mass coral bleaching again in 2017 next year again mass coral bleaching took place that's why revival was difficult so corals here are suffering plus there were three tropical cyclones in the past three years so that has also affected this region and now the present case is of crown of thorns starfish outbreak so cots is crown of thorns starfish so this is coral munching organism you can see this is the starfish with thorns so this is called crown of thorn starfish so it consumes corals so this is quickly killing all the corals here so australian great barrier reef has another challenge now and this crown of thorn starfish presently it is seen that they are increasing on huge scale it's an epidemic they are breeding at an epidemic level so that is why now the solution which has brought been brought forth to tackle crown of thorn starfish is to use vinegar so this vinegar kills crown of thorn starfish without affecting the corals and the other marine life so this is being used now then last news item is himalayan rocks may up flood risk fine study so earthquakes and landslides in himalayas this result in huge rocks as such dumped into the rivers so when they go downstream and are dumped into the rivers the river pathway may change the rivers may result in floods so this is the disaster risk which is there so mapping for this is also required flood risk mapping and it should be put into effect so that is why this is a study being done by scientists and it says that landslides which are taking place in the southern part of the himalaya so they are those are close to the plains so they have much larger risk of resulting in floods so this is a study which has brought forth so this needs to be taken into consideration while risking while disaster mapping so this is the flood risk associated so that is it thank you